All right, I wanna share with you all a new feature I added to my icongeneratorai.com site, and that is the ability to basically download an image and remove the background. So let's look at one of these images, I guess this one. This one has a nice gradient in the background. And I added a feature where you can click on the drop down and you can pay one credit to remove the background. And what this is gonna do, I'll, I'll walk you through the code and how this all works. It basically calls an API endpoint that invokes a Lambda, which is deployed using a container. And that runs some Python code that runs some, I think it's like some machine learning models under the hood remove the background and then it returns the image. So let's just go ahead and click this. Um, I need to work in the UX experience a little bit because right now it just forces you to scroll to the top and it shows this alert. But when it's done, you'll see, um, you can't see it because it's popped up on my screen, but we've got a download down here. If I click on it, here is the image and it does not have that gradient background. It kind of looks like it has a gray background, but if you actually look at the downloads here, you can see that it is transparent. It's white over here. And if I load that into GIMP, it will be a transparent background. So what this will allow my users to do is like generate icons to use on their site. To be honest, if you're good at Photoshop or GIMP, like you don't even need to have the system remove the background for you. And by the way, if you've already removed the background, you can just download it again. So like I have 113 credits, I can click download. Um, okay, that's actually a bug. It just kind of regenerated the whole thing. So I need to fix that. <laughs> so let's go to the collections page, which is where this drop down menu is at. And I'm gonna say remove background, okay? So we have a button and when you click it, it, depending on if you already removed the background or not, it changed the text. So like right now, if the background's removed, it says download, remove background. Otherwise it says remove background one credit. So when you click on this thing, it calls a method called remove background, which it's an endpoint to basically start that process, okay? It also scrolls to the top and clears out any previous errors. But let's look at this mutation. So if I go to router and I go to images, there is a method called remove background. There's a mutation, I should say. And what this mutation does, it basically, you pass in an icon ID and it's going to find that icon. It checks to see if there's an image for that icon. If there is, it just returns it. Now, I do think there might be a bug here because the front end shouldn't have done all this logic again and subtracted a credit. So there's probably a bug here. Um, but then later on, we basically remove one credit from their user profile, okay? And if they don't have any credits left, we basically throw an error so that you can't actually waste my computing resources to generate these icons or sorry, to remove the background from the icons. And then this is the key part right here. So if we're not running locally, this is going to manually invoke another Lambda that is deployed using SST. I'll walk you through that code real quick. But basically it invokes the Lambda. The Lambda downloads the image from S3. It runs it through the machine learning um, model processing, removes the background, and then it returns you an, a key. Okay, that key is what we return to the front end and the front end is going to basically download that image directly from the browser. We also update the icon down here and say, is background removed true? So that we can quickly, you know, change the text of this so that people don't have to like use credits to regenerate it. All right, so for the uh, interesting part, I made a new directory called BG remove. And what this is doing is I'm using SST to spin up a stack. Um, I've talked about SST on my channel a couple of times. It's basically a tool you can use to write CDK templates to spin up Amazon infrastructure and deploy stuff. The most important part of this whole directory is the stack here where I basically say, I, I want a Lambda function. I want to give it a timeout of 30 seconds. I want to give it a memory size of 248. And then I also want to build a Docker image from a directory, right? So you'll see here, I say Lambda Docker image code from image asset. This one is just a CDK thing that's built in. Like, I don't think this is SSCT related, um, but it basically looks at this directory here and it builds up this Docker file which has Python. This is something I found online. I just grab, grab this code, but it has Python. It basically installs a library called BG remove and installs a bunch of other dependencies. And then it basically spins up a handler that you can use to run the process. So if I look at the handler, this is some Python code, which again, given the event, it reads the file from S3, converts that to some type of like body or buffer or whatever. 
um, and then it calls remove on the image. Okay, so this is like the where the, the magic's happening. It uses a library called RimBG, which is like open source MIT license. So it runs that on the image, which is going to give you a new image with no background. And then I basically store that back in S3 using a new key prefix. And then I return that key um, over here. So I think one thing is worth mentioning is that just because you're using TypeScript for like a majority of your code, doesn't mean you can't bring in Python. Doesn't mean you can't bring in some other language which is going to solve the problem better, right? Python was some example code I found. It works. It literally took me like 20, 30 minutes to get this all set up. Um, if I had to write this by scratch in JavaScript or TypeScript, it would have taken probably a lot longer because I'd have to like figure this all out by hand versus someone already gave me the code. I'm just going to go ahead and just run it. And the power of Amazon and Lambda and SST is like you can run whatever code you want. You literally just point it to a Docker container and it just runs. And of course, there's some other things I had to set up with the Lambda function. Like I had to give it an environment variable called bucket name so it knows where to grab these icons from. And then I also had to attach a policy so that it had permission to get these S3 images and also put these images. So that's how that works. And it's a separate deploy process. I basically just do an npm run deploy prod, which runs SST deployed stage prod. I run this once. I haven't set this up with CICD yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to, but basically I can just deploy this once and I never have to worry about changing it again because as long as I don't have to change any of this code, like it's good. I can just invoke this from whatever and then my next app could be deployed as a separate deployable thing um, which integrates with that. So that's how I kind of got that all set up. Like I said, there's a little bug that's basically charging users another credit to remove the background even though it says download or remove background. So I got to fix that. But uh, yeah, feel free to go check out this app. And um, if you want to play around with that remove background thing, you can do that. I might actually give new uh, accounts two credits so that people can actually experiment with some of that stuff. Um, we'll see though. Anyway, hope you guys like this little overview. Have a good day and happy coding.